Yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. We got nine. The number nine. Things to stop doing. If you want to lose weight. And most of you guys do. I'd say like 85%. Yes. So we are here to answer your problems. We'll try. Okay. Number one. Stop thinking you can eyeball your macros. Why don't That's you just, a big one. Why don't you just track? Yeah. There's so many apps out there. We use MyFitnessPal personally, the free version. We're not like paying for it or anything. And there's a setting you can put your fiber in. So it's easy to just do your net carbs right there as well. Yeah. If you guys are using MyFitnessPal, go into the settings and start tracking fiber. Take out sodium or sugar. Right. If you're not losing weight, one the immediate thing you should start doing is tracking macros to make sure you're doing everything right. You want to know for sure you're eating the right amount. Yeah. There's no point in not knowing this if you're having trouble losing weight. Exactly. Chances are you're not, you know, you're eating to maintain or higher. Mm -hmm. Calories still count on keto. Maybe they don't count as much, but... It's just another method to help you just get off that road bump you've hit, right, with weight loss? Yeah. So the benefit of keto is long term, the calorie restriction happens automatically and easily. It doesn't mean it doesn't have to happen ever. You still have to start eating less. Right. So start tracking. Number two. Stop setting unrealistic goals. Like, I'm not going to lose 10 pounds in a week, probably not even a month, two months. So I'm not going to set that up for myself and then no, you know, failures right around the corner. So every little victory, small or big, if I just stayed on track today, I think that's something worth celebrating, right? Especially if these goals that you're not reaching are discouraging you, that's a big issue. Yeah. I think it's a good strategy to have really ambitious long-term goals, but maybe you want some reachable short-term goals. Like a good one might be adhering to the diet for X number of days. Like that's the goal. It shouldn't be a number on the scale. It shouldn't be really anything other than just things you can control. The scale you can't control all the time. Right. So that takes us to number three. And I used to be very much like this. I would wake up, eat a pound of cheesecake, and then be like, oh, there goes the diet or whatever I was doing. I can just eat shitty the rest of the day. Everyone does that. So don't give up once you cheat. You know, just cheat, I guess, if you have to, and then get right back on track. Yeah, I'm guilty of this. Not as much anymore. And yeah. what helped me with this is just accepting that it's going to happen occasionally. Yeah. And then treating the remainder of the day like a normal day. Not like, oh, now I can't eat the rest of the day. Because that usually ends up you slipping up again. Derailing. Like, yeah. Exactly. So if I cheat in the morning, and by cheating nowadays, I just mean eating excess calories, not yeah. eating carbs. Yeah. But if I cheat in the morning, I'll have a normal dinner. Like I'm not going to do any crazy tactics to try right. getting getting the day back. And also, I'm not going to constantly feel bad. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, why did I do that this morning? Like stop just thinking about it and just out of sight, out of mind kind of tactic. And just live the rest of the day like normal. Live it up. So number four, st and this this one Matt really likes. What is it? Stop doing the same thing, guys. Yeah. If you're not losing weight and it's an extended period of time, like a month, two months, then you need to switch things up, clearly. It might even be switching diets, but we would say probably not. There's, I mean, there's... Tactics. Yes, more tactics. Like throw in some tracking of macros is the first thing. Yeah. Throw in some uh, fasting... Maybe like, you know, even if you're eating the same meals all the time, switch stuff out, figure out if you have some kind of intolerance like dairy, nuts, something like that. So there's that saying you guys, I'm sure you've heard, right? The definition of insanity. Is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Okay, number five, stop if you are working out. Stop overestimating your workouts. I'm also very guilty of this. All of these apply to me, and that's why I feel like they're great that I'm giving them out to you. Before I was on a keto diet, I would go to the gym in the morning, probably like on the elliptical for like 40 minutes. So many people do this. Yeah, and then I would go home and be like, damn, I deserve a jar of peanut butter. And I would just sit on the couch and eat whatever I wanted all day long without thinking is mindless. Yep. And so I was like compensating. I was like, oh, I worked out. I can eat whatever I want. And that's also not how it works. A lot of people are tracking the calories they're running and they're like, okay, that's a, that's a five piece McNugget right there. I just ran. They're just like, as they're running, they're like, that's okay. That's actually fun. I should have done that. <laughs> yeah. So my advice would be Workouts, unless you're trying to gain muscle, that's pretty much the exception. Don't factor those into your right. caloric intake. 
unless you're going super hard, like a thousand calorie cardio session, then you want to pack your stuff in. If you're a marathon runner, if you're a professional athlete in some regard. um, So when we calculate our macros, sedentary, sedentary. Yeah, guys, even like, even if you're like a labor worker or like on your feet all day, whatever, don't say lightly active. You can always adjust. Yeah. Number six, stop focusing on short term. It's a long term game, guys. Keto especially, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a short-term diet. It's not going to get you there and then you're going to stay there without keeping up with the rest, you know, of tracking, of eating right foods. So, uh, what? No, that's the thing I love. Um, when people say, or the low-carb diet will help you lose weight, but then once you start eating normal again, you'll gain it all back. Have you heard that one? Yeah. The reason you gain it all back is because you're not supposed to be eating all these things in the first place. Right. So, you don't, just don't eat it again. <laughs> you don't go back to eating normal. But uh, no, the long-term mentality, that is a big one. That helps a lot. That makes everything less valuable in the current moment. Yeah, that's true. So like if you overeat on one day, it doesn't matter as much to you because you're in it for the long term. You're in it for the long haul. The scale, it doesn't agree with you that day. It doesn't really matter. Who cares? Number seven. Stop being results-oriented. So you don't want to be results-oriented, which we've already touched on a couple of times. You want to be action-oriented. For example... Watching this video. Taking action by finding oh, out. Oh, yeah, taking action. But what I mean is, like, you don't want to be like, um, in two weeks I want to weigh 180 pounds. You want to be like, in two weeks I want to have eaten at my macros for the day every day. Like, that's action. Those are things you can control. You can't control if you're going to weigh 180 pounds in two weeks. You can do your best to get there, but you want to set action-oriented goals. You want to be action-oriented, not results-oriented. Number eight, stop lying to yourself, guys. Be accountable. And we talk about accountability all the time because it's one of the most important aspects to any new to life. lifestyle yeah exactly take you're taking on it's super easy to lie to yourself you can convince yourself of anything you want to try aligning your internal dialogue with reality if you're overeating you want to be admitting that to yourself because you're not going to correct it unless you admit that it's an issue for you so we were actually talking to one person someone a while ago and he he made a really funny point and we knew it but like we'd never really thought about it out loud that when you're tracking yourself or when you're setting goals for yourself you're a lot more lenient right Mm -hmm. if if accountability is an issue for you do it with someone right like me and matt do it together so I'm not like lenient on myself. I'm like, oh, Matt, I'm going to have a fat bomb. So like he, it's just out there and that like makes me feel good. So it's like, well, I know I should, I'm going to definitely put in my fitness pal now because I've said it out loud and someone knows about it. And you know, I could just leave it off though and have that extra 120 calories. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Oh, when I'm weighing stuff out, yeah. if a couple of extra almonds fall onto the scale, it's still 28 <laughs> grams yeah. or if a couple fall into my mouth, like I'm not, I'm excluding those, but you know, that's where the slip ups happen. That's where the lying starts. So, you know, just be accountable. Um, and don't be lenient on yourself. You're your biggest, you know, criticizer. You're your biggest like critic critic is what I'm trying to say. So, um, take advantage of that. You know, be hard on yourself. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes, but number nine, stop thinking negatively. That's also, yeah. Tie in. Perfect. Yeah. This is th- Probably, they're all really big ones. Yeah. <laughs> but this one is so true. I've just realized this probably in the last year of my life yeah. is the thoughts you have, like happiness is a choice, that type of thing. Like just what you're thinking becomes reality. I have this saying that I've been using. You guys can use it too. I love it. Every time I'm at the gym and I'm about to do like a really challenging weight or something, I'll just, <laughs> I'll say to myself, this is what I do. This is what I do. I bench press 195 pounds. That's what I do. I'm a person that does that. You wanted to get that out there. That's not a lot. Actually, my bench press is like my weakest lift. Yeah, I just keep telling myself that I'm this person. And a lot of overweight people probably identify with themselves as being an overweight person. Yeah. And, you know, like you're the overweight person in the group. Like, you know, there was John. He's the overweight guy. That is easy to stick in your mind. Then you're just always the overweight guy. You think that's what you are. And if you think it, start thinking of yourself as a thin person... It sounds dumb, but if you start thinking of yourself as like your ideal weight person, that becomes reality eventually. Or not even like I'm a thin person, but like, you know, I'm not this person that I've created up and fan- like, you know, it's like a fantasy that you've made and you're, you're attempting to make it reality, right? So just 
don't think negatively. Don't, I'm not any person. I'm just who I am and I'm working towards something. And yeah, that's, maybe a better example would be like, I'm a person who eats healthy. Right. I eat, these are the things I eat. I'm, these are the things I eat. I eat a keto diet. Yeah. That's who I am. At this point, we identify with being people that eat a keto diet for sure. Absolutely. And negative thinking is an easy thing to fall into. It starts with getting up in the morning and just, you know, yeah, making a choice to be happy, to eat better, to, you know, be productive at work, to enjoy time with your partner, like whatever you want to do, but just think about everything in a positive way. And that helps make it a positive experience for you. I'm a little Buddha. I am a little Buddha. <laughs> but yeah, I used to be overweight as a kid. And um, though I grew out of it, you know, through various methods and dieting, I, for, for a really long time, up until I actually started a ketogenic diet, I would look in the mirror and still see that overweight girl, insecure, you know, all of that. And so making a keto lifestyle for me and like working out and like doing certain things changed my mindset. But the hardest part is actually just changing your thoughts. So those are the nine things that you need to stop doing in order to help you get back on track. Stop it. Stop. Long video. Not that long. We didn't ramble that long. Hashtag Keto Quebec. Is this what you're going for? All right, guys. That's a wrap. Bye. Change your habits if you can. We're trying to. We're with you. Yeah. Comment below. Let us know the things that are potentially holding you back and that you plan on stopping.